Hey, good afternoon everyone. Kay here on my homestead in Tennessee. Welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to make a ferment. I went down to the garden and harvested a colorful collection of okra, peppers, cucumbers, fresh dill, grape leaves for tannins, and we are going to make a crisp ferment vegetable medley that I can enjoy for weeks or months out of the refrigerator. So stick around. What do you think, Tiger? You like the harvest? Huh? Okay, I just came in with a harvest of flowers. These are zinnias, sulfur cosmos, amidara, anise hyssop, and yeah, the um, you know, you know that one. <laughs> okay, I have fresh dill. I have two grape leaves. I have okra. I have lemon cucumber. And I have, I believe this is telegram. I have Melrose pepper. This is a sweet pepper. I have lipstick. Also sweet. I have sweet chocolate pepper. I have Doe Hill. This is also a sweet, very sturdy, smaller pepper. And this is my mystery pepper. And we're going to try one and see if it's hot. I have been fermenting. This is my second season, and everything I've learned has come from Stacy at Off Grid with Doug and Stacy and Mary at Mary's Nest. And for a deep tutorial on salt and other issues with fermenting, go to Mary's Nest and look in her fermented foods playlist. Also, Mary has a new cookbook out, so you'll make sure and want to get that traditional foods cookbook. Stacy. She was here last April, April in 2022, and she critiqued all my ferments from the fall before. So I'll put the link right up here and make sure and watch that video if you have any questions about fermenting. I'm just going to get these vegetables prepared and we'll get started. Now, if you're new to my channel, I live on about nine, little over nine acres in Tennessee. After starting my gardening and cooking life in California. My channel is about 12 years old. I've been around for a long time and I have a cooking from the garden easy recipes playlist so I'll be sure and put that link up there. But also what I focus on here is sustainability and of course as an older person just making a homestead work and being as sustainable as I possibly can and self-sufficient. So if those things interest you, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to click that little bell for notifications. Scroll down and click all so you won't miss an upload. Now we're going to start with, I am only going to use what I harvested this morning. I decided to put it all together. When I started, I was just going to do cucumbers. And I've had some problems with my cucumbers and haven't had that big bunch of cucumbers to bring in and can into pickles. So I decided this morning to make a medley of vegetables uh, and ferment them. To keep your vegetables crisp when they're fermenting or canning, you want to use something with tannins and grape leaves is a great example and of course since I have them I picked out two beautiful grape leaves. What I'm going to do is make two half gallon ferments and I'm going to use the nipple tops and in the bottom I'm going to put one grape leaf in each jar. Now the tannins keep the vegetables more crisp and in one jar I'm going to cut up the vegetables so they're more of a uniform size and the other one I'm going to keep them whole and then compare them later on in the season. Now 
Now since this one's fatter, I think I'll split this one and keep this one whole. But I am going to take off the blossom end and the stem end. Now you want to use sterile jars or jars out of the dishwasher for your ferment. And I just line the bottom. You can also use bay leaves if you don't have fresh grape, grape leaves. Now I'm going to do this one first. Well, we'll see if I can get Now vegetables do shrink, so that's why you want to get get them packed in well. Just going to take out the seed and the, the veins of the pepper. <laughs> this is fairly experimental. If you've never seen a lemon cucumber, I really love these. And you want to harvest lemon cucumbers when they are just starting to show a little bit of yellow. Okay. This dough hill is a real kind of pumpkin shape, real squashed looking but very firm, very firm pepper with a thick exterior. Now let's get some okra. And I'm just going to take off a little bit of the cut end. The fermentation will go in this open end. Like for example, if you are fermenting tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, you would use a toothpick and slide it into each tomato so that the ferment gets down in the tomato better. When you're putting a hot pepper in your ferment, you want to know how hot it is because you don't want to go to all this trouble and load up all these beautiful vegetables and then it's too hot. I lost the tag and I've never seen this before and it's a tough little pepper and so I just want to taste test this before I put it in the ferment. Okay, where's the water? It's right here. Okay, th that is extremely hot. Oh, you know what would be better to drink is milk. Did you ever hear that? Hold on. Okay, when I first started growing peppers, and I have a wonderful pepper video, I think it's called Growing Peppers in Containers, and you can see it. Let's see, you can see that that link right up there. Hold on. That is a wonderful local raw milk. Mm. <sighs> Puts out the fire. Even a piece of cheese is, comes close, but that really, boy, that is hot. I've never seen that before. It's, as you can see, it's very meaty. And a cayenne would have a much thinner, you know, Ooh. 
that wasn't a very big bite. That is not going in. But while I'm, my taste buds are all hot and everything, I'm going to taste this. And this one also did not have... <laughs> this one did not have a... I mean, you know it's hot. Generally, if they are long and skinny, they're hot. <laughs> they're rarely sweet when they're this shape. I know that the hot peppers, according to Stacy, cool down in, during the fermenting process, but you don't want the whole ferment to be so hot that you don't enjoy it. <sighs> and I'm not sure I could make a compare. Well, let's just try it. <laughs> anyway, at the end of that video, I was shining off and I did this little bite. I'm trying to think what, I think that was a Pekin. I was growing these, these multicolored peppers at the time. I forget the name of it. They were so pretty, you know, you could harvest them when they were purple, yellow, orange, or red. And they were, it's, it's, can be used just as an ornamental and not even eat it, but the peppers are pretty hot. Or I might have actually bit, bit into a Pekin pepper, which is, Pretty hot. Hmm. I don't really taste anything. I don't taste it. That's just barely hot. Those red ones are going in. Uh, our ferment is not going to benefit from the bright yellow color. Sorry about that. Okay. I changed my mind. The red one is too hot too. I've just had two more glasses of milk. <sighs> Nothing like testing something during the video, right? When I first started, I think I started to say this, when I first started really getting into growing peppers, I grew a lot of different varieties in, in pots, cloth pots. And I would see these people on, the, on YouTube and they would be biting into these ghost peppers and they would just like, start hiccuping. I didn't do that. Um, and your, your mouth goes numb. The back of your throat closes. I mean, it's scary when it gets really, really hot. And those are not even compared to ghost peppers or something. Not even comparable. But I don't want to ruin my ferment. And so we're going to keep it not hot. <laughs> I wanted to put in one, two of my cloves of garlic. Save the other two for the other ferment. And then I'm just going to start dropping these in. And I cut up another cucumber and made it into shorter pieces because as you get to the top, it's helpful to be able to kind of stuff things in. Be nice to see that okra from the outside. Well, I think we need a little bit more stuff. We need something with a different color, though, don't we? near the top. This is the top though. Pretty close. The thing about ferments is you really want to pack it down, but it's harder to pack down with a half gallon because you can't get your finger down there as far. That might be just perfect by the time we get the brine in there. And the brine is just the salt and the water. Okay.
Okay. And I think, you know, obviously I could have packed it better down in here. But it'll have to do. All right, we've got our garlic, and we're just going to put in a little mustard seed. I'm just going to put in a uh, quarter of a teaspoon, or maybe a, maybe a half a teaspoon. And whoa, peppercorns have a mind of their own. Have you ever noticed that? They're, that's going to be a little hot just by itself. Now what we want to do for a half gallon size is use one tablespoon of finely ground sea salt. This is Redmond Real Salt, ancient fine sea salt. I love doing that. Ah, you know what we almost forgot? It was hiding back here is my dill. Okay, so I'm going to take two sprigs. Mmm, smells so good. And I'm just going to stuff it. Okay. Now I like to go ahead and put my weight on and then I know, you know, how the water is filling up. So you're going to want to use a weight. If you don't have one of these weights, Mary discusses a number of things that you can use. Stacy does also. But I like these mason top weights. And you can see this was a quart and it didn't quite fill it up. It will depend on how tightly you pack the vegetables. And you just want to fill it up to where it's all the way to the top of the weight, but not to the top of this because it could cause too much pressure, too much gas, and cause a problem. Now, I'm going to just Wipe this off. And then you want to write the date on this. I use a piece of just scotch tape, you know, and write the date on because that's easy to pull off of here. If you do something like duct tape or something, it's hard to get off your jars. But then you write the date on that you that you put it together. And you keep this in a room temperature place out of sunlight and check it. Make sure it's not overflowing. With these nipple tops, it pretty much takes care of the gas issue because it escapes as it needs to. You know, when it's 75 in the house, it could be three days it could be done. Or if it's cooler in the house, it could be longer. So you just want to um, take care to watch it. And you can always test it after three to five days and see if you like the taste of it. And of course the salt will go down as it continues to ferment. So it may taste really salty in the beginning and then not so much later on. Okay, that's one. And look how gorgeous and colorful it is. Wow. Add my weight. Off. I've already got my salt, mustard, black peppercorns, and dill. Whoa. That's the dill underneath the weight. Thanks so much for watching till the end, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. 
And if you try this, leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you.